first read through scripture and then proclaimed. Will you pray with me as we prepare our hearts and minds to receive a word of grace? Lord, calm our hearts, calm our minds, calm our anxious spirits, and help us be available now in these moments ahead to receive your special word of grace. Amen. Scripture this morning is Psalm of David, number 143. Listen now as the scripture is read. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore, my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go. For to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, as we meditate on the words of scripture. May each of us hear what it is that you have to say to us today. Bless the words of my mouth that they might be a blessing to your people. Amen. Sometimes things happen that remind us of the fragility of life, and the precarity of life. The flash flood in Upper Makefield last weekend is one of them, and it hits close to, close to home for us. The sen senselessness of lives lost, its suddenness and randomness are painful and scary and mind-boggling. And then I also, Jen pointed out to me uh, just a couple days ago that um, in Lower Makefield, there has been another tragedy of a father ending his young son's life and then taking his own life. It is hard to know what to say in the face of such events. Platitudes do not suffice, but they are often all we can muster. So as I sat down to plan this week's service, I wanted to create some space for us to be really honest before God about what it is we are thinking and feeling. To not feel like we have to say the right thing, or worry that we might say the wrong thing, or feel pressure to put on a brave or happy face. And I hope our worship together is always a space for this kind of authenticity, but I wanted to be especially intentional about it today. And that's why I chose Psalm 143 as our scripture reading. We've been moving through the lectionary, but I decided that I was just going to pick the scripture that um, 
I felt spoke most to our situation this week. It is a psalm, a poem for a time when we have more questions than answers, when things don't make sense. It is a prayer for the kinds of times when gratitude and joy before God do not come so easily, or at least do not come unmixed with much pain and questioning. I've named some major events that have occurred locally recently that may have left us feeling this way, but I also know that there are other events and situations and circumstances even closer to home for many of us that have us asking God questions or wondering where God is. Uncertainties around our own or loved one's health, family and friend relationships, financial worries, questions about the future. This psalm before us today is one of many psalms in scripture called Psalms of Lament that show us a way to pray when we experience such questioning, sorrow, and pain. But what exactly is lament? We might think of it as complaining or grieving, and while it has elements of both of those things, it also is more than that. As people created by God and called to be in relationship with God, Psalms of Lament show us that we don't have to hide our questions and our negative emotions from God. We couldn't even if we wanted to because God knows us in our innermost being. But sometimes we may feel like we do, like we have to. We may feel like the only way to be faithful is to stay positive or not question God. But here we see the psalmist showing to us what it looks like, begging God to answer him, admitting that it feels like God is not there. So he says, hear my prayer, give ear to my supplications, answer me. And later, answer me quickly, do not hide your face from me. We see the psalmist being honest about the trials he's facing. He's been pursued by enemies, his life crushed to the ground, his heart, his very spirit is fainting and broken within him. Where is God in all of this? And yet it is also very clear that in this honest grappling, the psalmist is not showing a lack of trust. The psalmist is not being unfaithful by questioning God. It is because he knows that God is faithful and righteous that he brings all of his troubles and questions to God. It is because he knows God's love is steadfast and unfailing that he can ask for what he so desperately needs and wants from God. Think about who you go to in times of crisis. Who you, can, who you confide your worries to? What is it about them that leads you to open up to them? How do they respond? Why do you trust them? Conversely, have you ever shared a concern or worry with someone only to have it be dismissed or minimized or be, to be judged for it? Do you make a habit of going to that person when things get tough? The psalmist has this kind of relationship with God where he knows he can go to God because of who God is and how God has been in the past. In verse 2, he says, Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. There's a recognition here that God is capable of judgment. Actually, God is the only one capable of judgment because God is the creator of all, the one who orders all things, who is righteous in every way. But there is also a recognition that no human being is capable of being righteous in the way that God is righteous. So the psalmist isn't bringing this prayer to God on the basis of his own merit or deserving, but on the basis of grace. He knows 
that God does not owe anyone anything. And at the same time, he knows that God loves and gives and provides anyway. He knows that God is gracious. He's experienced God's love and provision. He brings the history of this relationship to mind now as he is facing such uncertainty and sorrow, saying, I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hand. And because the psalmist calls to mind this history, he yearns for what only God can give in this time of great sorrow. Some of us, like may, like the psalmist, have this kind of intimacy with God. We may be able to call to mind how God has cared and provided for us throughout our lives. For others, this may be more difficult. Maybe your idea of God is of a God who judges. And if that is the case for you, I hope that this psalm of lament can be a voice that challenges that idea of a judgmental God who sees our questions as unfaithfulness. Moreover, I hope the life of Jesus, who shows us God's love in the flesh, who is not retributive or vengeful, but who answers death with life, can challenge that idea of a judgmental God. I pray that you might feel you can go to God rather than shrink from God when you are hurting or angry or have questions. Others of us still may feel uncomfortable praying in the way that the psalmist does. Maybe prayer has always been something that the pastor does. Maybe God is more of a concept or an idea than a being with whom we have a relationship. And so when we have more questions than answers, maybe what happens is we shuffle around our idea or concept of who God is. Or maybe God doesn't really factor into our response much at all. And if that is the case for you, I want to encourage you that having a relationship with God is something you can develop. You may not experience it spontaneously, but rather it is something to be nurtured. It can be nurtured by carving out time in your day, even five minutes, to sit and invite God to be present and open yourself to that possibility. It can be nurtured by practicing, noticing things that you're grateful for, by beginning to see life through the lens of God's provision. And in difficult times when there are more questions than answers, it can be nurtured by bringing those questions to God in prayer and remaining open for how and when God might respond. If you do not know or have the words to speak, praying the Psalms as if they were your own prayers can be a way into that practice, a way to get comfortable speaking to God in ways that you may not have tried before. And when words fail, let us remember that the Spirit of God himself prays with us, for us, and through us. This morning, as we sit with whatever is on our hearts and minds, the heaviness of recent events in our communities, in our own lives, and in the world, I'd like to lead us through an exercise of praying this psalm together. I'm going to read the psalm again a verse or a few verses at a time, and then offer a prompting question or reflection to help you take the psalm into your own heart and experience. I'll be leaving some moments of silence in between for you to answer the questions or meditate on the reflection for yourself. I know we don't always do the greatest with silence, so just do the best you can. <laughs> And if you are not in a heavy or question-filled place right now, that is okay. There is no need to manufacture grief or anger or questions. If that's you, I'd invite you to use this time to pray on behalf of those who are experiencing these kinds of struggles. So as we go into this exercise, you may choose to close your eyes or keep them open, whatever is most comfor comfortable for you. 
Let us pray. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. What do you want from God right now? What kind of relief or answers are you asking for? Bring your questions and desires to God now, knowing that God wants what is best for you and for all. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before God, before you. We know that we are not perfect, that we fall short, and sometimes we let our own failings prevent us from being honest with God because we don't feel like we deserve or have the right to ask for anything. We may even wonder if we've done something to deserve the pain we are feeling. Name any of those fears, those feelings of not enoughness, allowing God's grace to swallow them up and push them aside so you can be fully honest with God. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore, my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. Call to mind the questions you asked God, the relief you asked God for just a few moments ago. How does it feel to be holding those unanswered questions? or to need that relief? Do you feel pursued by these weighty things as by enemies? Where do you feel the pain, uncertainty, or anger in your body? How are they impacting your spirit and your life? Tell God what you've been feeling. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. Recall now some memories of the happiest times in your life. Think of some of your favorite people. If you're having a hard time with this, bring to mind the beauty of creation, flowers, trees, animals, the ocean, the mountains. Express your gratitude for God, to God for these happy times, these special people, this creation.
I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. The God who created all good things, who has enriched your life with the good things you have just been meditating on, is the same God to whom you are bringing your questions and suffering now. Open your heart to God's presence and movement. You might actually stretch out your hands or imagine stretching out your hands. Imagine running into God's arms for cover. Imagine waking up tomorrow with a sense of overwhelming peace, love, and direction. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. Recognize that while only God is God, God also invites you to participate in your own healing. Ask God to show you the way forward, the next step to get to the place of wholeness that you desire. Listen. Even if God is nudging you in a direction you hadn't expected, know God's good spirit will lead the way. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. Our real enemies are rarely other people, but rather the forces of evil, brokenness, and sin in the world that cause our pain and suffering. Feel free to ask God to destroy these enemies. Ask God once again for what it is you desire, for the relief and answers you are seeking. With a sense of readiness to go where God leads, release your sorrow anger, worries, fears, and questions into God's hands. Receive in their place overwhelming love. And if you can't quite release the suffering yet, that is okay. God's love is big enough to make room beside it in your heart. Amen. Thank you for indulging me in that exercise. 
I've asked Christina to play Morning Has Broken for our musical interlude today.